Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, the Ghana Police Service has announced a reward of 20,000 CDs for reliable information that could lead to the arrest of suspect Fatal Motoway. Um, it's a suspect in connection with the recent disturbances at Mamobi, Nima. As some supporters of the MPP and the NDC at this altercation, gunshots were fired. Fatal Motoway was seen in, in a now viral video brandishing a gun during that altercation between uh, supporters of the MPP and the NDC in Mamobi and has been declared wanted in relation to the disturbances. As you see on the screen there, the police says a reward of 20,000 CDs uh, being offered for anyone who provides credible information leading to his arrest, appealing to the public to support intelligence-led efforts by providing this information. And based on the police's own um, earlier communication, this is the man that we're talking about, the gentleman in dreadlocks uh, with the word weapon um, in his hand. This is him, right? Close shot of him we see there um, as well. So... In fact, there are many who say that th this particular situation is not one that may necessarily have persons who even know him coming out to, to give information. Adib Sani is a security analyst with the Jatike Center for Human Security. He's joining us on Zoom. Adib, uh, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. You, you know the dynamics of this particular area and many other areas. We understand that this, this gentleman is not a stranger. He is he's known in the area. Will 20,000 be enough to, in, in, as it were, have someone who knows him volunteer information to the police service in a closely knitted community where he finds himself? Hmm. Well, Alfred, interestingly, my PhD thesis um, is uh, the... the, the it's, it's on Nima, as a matter of fact. I have followed closely uh, happenings in the area, including gang violence and all that. I've done a bit of research, and I understand the socioeconomic dynamics of the area who, uh, in my opinion, even 50,000 Ghana cities would not be enough because we have consistently failed to deal with the fundamental issues. What are they? Um, I remember when there was a clash between the Kumoji gang and the Bon Bon clash. Uh, you know, you remember that one that happened about two years or so ago. Um, similarly, these individuals were on police wanted list. They were finally found. I mean, they, they were wanted as if they are terrorists, okay? They were finally found, and immediately they were, they were re re released. And nobody knows what has become of that case today. I spoke with some people in the area who told me, look, that is what the police usually does. They would arrest these individuals, and in less than 24 or 48 hours, they release them, and that's the close of the case, all right? Similarly, it is also very possible that this individual in question would be found, be detained for 24 hours, and that would be the end of the case. Because of that, a lot of people in the area seem to have lost trust and confidence in the police. Secondly, some find better protection under the criminal regime or the, the gang um, um, regime in the area than that of state security. Interestingly, because I remember when the violence happened first between the Bong Bong and the Kumoji gangs, I was there with the police team, you know, we went around to seek opinions about what was going on. And the lady spoke to us. When the police left, I still was around. They didn't know I was part of the team. And you wouldn't, you can't imagine the level of rebuke she received from those persons who were there and saw her speak with the police. So it has become a norm. You don't speak with the police. You trust the gangs better than you trust the police. And, and that has been the case for some time now. So I am not surprised. He's been a very notorious figure. He's known, I've spoken with people who know him so well. 
and his character is also known. And I'm not surprised that nobody has really come out with information about his whereabouts because of what has happened in the past. They can't just trust the police or something uh, like that. Adib, it's, it's a very instructive analysis that you, you, you make there because of your knowledge of this Mamobi Nema area. Yes, this gentleman, as you indicated, he is known, he's not a stranger. And you say not even 50,000 CDs would entice anyone to give information about him and his whereabouts. And the police say they are doing intelligence-led, you know, uh, information gathering. So if money is not going to do it, what else? <laughs> As a matter of fact, no amount of money can do it. The police needs to work to improve their image, especially in the jungles. Um, they have to work closely with the community leaders and also ensure that the laws are duly enforced. Because if ABC does it and you don't hold them to account, they are not brought to book for their actions, VE will do it, hoping they will also be left off the hook. And that is the thing. In criminology, it's called rational choice theory. Before anyone perpetrates a crime, is as human as we are, we are able to juxtapose the risk against the reward factor. So if the reward of you not getting caught outweighs the risk of you getting caught, you would naturally be incentivized into perpetrating the crime. On the other hand, if the risk is more than the reward, you would be deterred from committing the crime in the first place. The residents have just had enough of these groups, and there are a lot of these groups who are being taken advantage of by politicians because the, the, the saddest bit of it is, and any time I get the opportunity to speak with my people, the last time was at the National Mosque. I mean, I told them, look, when the politicians are looking for muzzles to go cause trouble, their favorite destination are the jungles. Why does it have to be so? So we need to educate the people to get them to understand that it doesn't benefit anyone, neither themselves nor their families, to be used by politicians to perpetrate crimes, especially as we go into these elections. And mind you, a lot of these guys are armed. Where do they get these weapons from? And obviously, these weapons are not even registered in the mm -hmm. first place. So we need to be very careful. Because if a health work, something as simple as a health work, Metamorphosis into such unbridled violence, it, it really sends right. shivers down my spine. Uh, because there was absolutely nothing healthy about the work in the first place. And it begins the question of whether this could possibly be a great uh, result for more you know, violent um, clashes to happen as we go into the elections. Uh, Adib, I, I do appreciate your expertise on this matter, and I, I thank you so much for letting us understand the architecture of this particular crime that the Ghana Police Service is dealing with right now. Adib Sane is a security analyst joining us here on Ghana tonight. We're going to go for this quick break. We're back. Coming up next, renewed calls for organized labor to resume their nationwide strike. We'll tell you why some want organized labor back on this strike. Stay with us after this quick break. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, uh, one of the civil society organizations uh, championing the fight against illegal mining, popularly known as Galamsey, they want organized labor to resume their initially planned nationwide strike to, to put pressure on government to step up its efforts. And we'll tell you why. Because these demands, the declaration of a state of emergency in line with Section 31, of the 1992 constitution that has not been considered. In fact, not just the CSOs, uh, organized labor as well, demand that a state of emergency be declared on our water bodies and forest cover when it comes to illegal mining. Awala Sewa is the national coordinator of Eco-Conscious Citizens. I will appreciate your time here on Ghana tonight. You, you made this demand, organized labor made this demand of the state of emergency to be declared. The president hasn't considered that. Now, how much of a difference, really, is it going to make, from your view? You can see that things are getting worse. We heard about um, Erastus being attacked by heavily armed uh, illegal miners or their security. I mean, this raises serious security concerns. 
We have the existential threat we are facing to do with the poisoning of our water bodies. The landscape has been poisoned, so our food is also being poisoned. We have the birth defects, the medical aspect, and so on and so forth. To add to it, you also have security concerns where you have armed men. We don't want Ghana to descend to parts of Latin America where you know, the, dra the drug cartels uh, control areas. So we are saying that nip things in the bud, declare a state of emergency, which is necessary before we can start the reclamation, remove all miners and their equipment, start the reclamation using the polluter pays principle, meaning that when the illegal miners are arrested, prosecuted, found guilty, any assets they have will be sold towards the cost of reclamation, which is a very expensive business. And then we're also saying that you need to repeal LI 2462, which presumably the process has been started, but it needs to be expedited. And then you really need to be serious about clamping down on illegal miners. When you go there and they run away, you need to seize the equipment, get the owners, and start yeah. holding the owners accountable. I see. There's so many things we can do, but we really need to begin to take robust action. And, and it's important because... that you make reference to this because in a number of the instances that this renewed fight has seen, we see some of them running away even before the task force sets in. Nobody is arrested. And, and for you, you want this to be one of the major considerations for voters going into this election, that if, the, if there is no considerable victory against this Galamse, that should influence citizens' decisions on who to vote for? You know, when, there's, when, when war is declared against the country, all political parties come together, put aside their differences, and are thinking of the welfare of the country. Actually, there's a declaration of war against Ghana by the environmental terrorists. They've declared war on Ghana. They are poisoning our water bodies. They've poisoned the landscape, the food we eat. Recently, some tubers and plantain were found to contain mercury. We know water is life. They are, they are poisoning our water, which in war times is a war crime. In addition to this, I've already talked about the, um, the rise in kidney disease, cancers, neurological challenges, maternal deaths, and so on and so forth. So any person aspiring to political office, if he really cares about Ghanaians and not just about being whether a president or member of parliament for the sake of it, all political parties should come together now and say that, let's put Ghana first. In order to put Ghana first, we must declare a state of emergency, remove right. all miners from our forest reserves and our water bodies, put I systems see. in place, numbers that uh, communities can call when they find excavators moving towards the forest yeah. reserves or um, and, and other uh, equipment towards our water bodies. Certainly, and deal excavators with them are, promptly are, are, are and certainly big enough to choose. But you want organized labor, Ola, and, and quickly, you want organized labor to re go back and go on this nationwide strike that they never went on. Why is that? According to organized labor, they didn't call it off. According to them, they suspended it. And what we are saying is that you suspended it since the suspension. What exactly has happened? We found Erastos being attacked, viciously attacked here in his team. And, and we don't know that anybody has been arrested and is in custody for this uh, cowardly attack. We know that illegal mining is still going on. I can talk about Atronsu. The excavators are back on the landscape. According to activists there, they are working and causing um, environmental uh, degradation. It's happening in other parts of the country. So what exactly has been achieved that made um, organized labor suspend their um, strike? So we are urging them to, re to give government seven days notice to declare a state of emergency, expedite mm. the revocation of LI 2462, right. remove all um, illegal miners, if are all miners from our forest reserves and water bodies, Perfect. have a proper task force where we have their numbers, they can be called, and then any um, district um, head or regional minister, if Galamse, or shall I say illegal mining is taking place under your watch, you are not well, doing about anything about it. You should be removed. Right. On. I think we should take some of these steps, and I really urge organized labor. Uh, well, I appreciate your time, and, and in fact, point well made there. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. Well, is the national coordinator of.
Echo Conscious is one of the NGOs pushing and leading this fight against illegal mining in this country. But there's some news coming through right now, fresh on the plate. Some breaking news right now here on Ghana Time. Let, let's put that on the screen. News just coming through right now from Parliament. There's a statement coming through from Parliament with regards to security measures that um, are put in place ahead of tomorrow. And that's what you see there. Security measures for proceedings from Tuesday, October. October 22, as part of measures put in place to ensure the safety and security of the right honorable speaker, MPs and staff, honorable members are respectfully to take note of the following. All MPs, staff and members of the press will be screened thoroughly before the entry into the chamber. B, bodyguards of MPs will not be permitted in the chamber. C, vehicles will not be allowed to park around the Grand Arena. D, MPs are to be dropped at the designated drop-off zones within the presence of the Accra International Conference Center. E, the Ghana Police Service will provide directions to the designated drop-off zone. F, MPs are requested to wear their parliamentary identification tags. G, Access to the chamber will be from 8 a.m. That's 0800 hours. H. The public will not be allowed access to the public gallery until further notice. So, respectfully, counting on the cooperation of all, this is a statement coming through minutes ago, fresh on the plate. We had it right here on Ghana tonight. These are the security measures announced by the Parliament ahead of tomorrow. All MP staff and members of the press will be screened thoroughly. Bodyguards of the MPs will not be permitted in the chamber. Vehicles will not be allowed to be to park around the Grand Arena. MPs are to be dropped at the designated drop-off zones within the presence of the conference center. Ghana Police Service will provide direction to the designated drop-off zone. MPs are requested to wear their parliamentary identification tags. Access to the chamber from 8 a.m. The public will not be allowed access to the public gallery until further notice. This is a statement that was uh, just coming through, uh, signed um, by Frederick Bauer, retired Deputy Marshal of Parliament, as we see there. Well, that's information coming through right now here on your election command center. So stay with us tomorrow. We'll bring you up to the minute detail of what's going to be happening across all media general platforms. My name is Alfred Okansi. Do have a good night.